So today in history, we'll be studying the Cold War. <clears throat> but before we can talk about the Cold War, we have to talk about the opposing sides. One is the capitalism and the other is the socialism. Uh, this first will be only an overview. The next two videos will be one on socialism and one on capitalism. And then we'll talk about North Korea, China, and all of that. And then I think we can talk about the Cold War. And so the idealists of socialism and communism thought that capital capitalism was like the beginning. And then we would do a few changes in capitalism, actually many changes in capitalism, and change it to socialism and a few changes in socialism, and it would end in communism. The um, capitalism has a, um, a, I don't know the exact word. It's like axiom, but it's not quite, which is private ownership of land or anything. Uh, any good. There are private things. It's not, for example, if I have something, that something is mine, and I do whatever I feel like with that. And in the socialism and communism, you don't have a thing, and you're not one thing. You're like a atom in a uh, in a bread dough. Like, you're not one yourself, you're in a mess, literally mess. All right, uh, also socialism, they don't like accumulation of capital, like any goods. So land, uh, money, whatever. They don't, because then they will, we'll have few rich people and many poor people, that's bad. So they don't like high concentration of wealth. And what would they will do, they will redistribute wealth. And for that, we need a larger government. And that government will control the major contributors. And so we have two figures. We have first Karl Marx, German. He was more socialist. And so, yeah, socialism, no accumulation of capital, no high concentration of wealth. That's kind of the same thing. No few rich people and many poor people. Like, they will have to redistribute wealth. And that needs a larger government. And what do I mean by a larger government? The government will have more power over the spheres of life. For example, some say that the government should only care about our safety and about our health. We should take care of our lives. For example, in economy, I can use my money however I want. In education, I can teach my son however and whatever I want. Uh, in Liberty, I can do whatever I want. The, uh, only if that doesn't uh, damages anybody else. But that's another thing. We're talking about socialism. All right. And, and he talked about what socialism would be like in his manifesto. But that all of that is in utopia. They tried, but it didn't succeed. And also, and also they would have one dominant communist party that back in the days were called Vanguard because it's the part that goes uh, in the front when the, when the army is marching. But we've seen and it didn't work. So that's why it's called in utopia. We can see in China that they have, this is in China, I think it is in China, that they only have one 
dominant communist party. Like there is only one party and no, that's why it differs from capitalism where you have a democracy, kinda. Um, yeah, so no private, no one and no, yeah, no one also for wealth redistribution, larger government. And we have another figure. It's Vladimir Lenin from the USSR. Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov Lenin was, he, he made the Bush. The, the revolution has a name, uh, Boucher. I don't remember the name, but and he was communist. The other one was um, socialist, it was Lenin. And then we have Marxism and Leninism. Uh, which, yeah. Oh, Bolshevik. I didn't read it. Oh, it's right here. Bolshevik. Yeah, he did the Bolshevik uh, revolution. And so he was more communism, communist, the other was more socialist. But they have kind of the same uh, thoughts. But the communism is more utopic than socialism. Well, next video, we'll talk in deep capitalism and socialism.